Live from the luxurious studios of Coefficient Media in Jackson, Michigan, this week's show is brought to you by Audible.com and Carbonite. This is the Android App Show, episode number 75. On this episode, we're going to be reminding you what your Android phone can do that the iPhone 5 still cannot. Oh. Yikes. Welcome to the Android App Show. Welcome to the show, everyone. <laughs> the nice, uh, the duel of the tablets yeah. on the intro there. Pretty cool stuff. It is cool. Well, this is uh, this is the Android App Show, seventy five episodes in now, Dave. Yeah, uh, I and think this we're is, doing pretty good. And this is Lane. I guess I should introduce myself, please. Trying to, uh, we cover stuff every week, right? About uh, Android apps. Took last week off, a little end of summer break. It's true. So got the fall coming up now, though. Yeah. Temperatures are dropping. Uh, only here in the, like the Midwest and the Northern Midwest. Everywhere else is still like really hot. And, Except for it's like 80 degrees out today. Yeah. Well, it's not so bad. This though. weekend. They got 90s and crazy, crazy temperatures down south. What? Yeah. What are you guys doing down there? Yeah. Getting hot? It, it was down in like what the 60s or 50s in Fargo though. I think it's. Yeah, it's supposed to drop off. The Canadian air kind of dipped down there again like it does, you know cold stuff welcome to the weather trip weather show yeah whatever oh, it's it's late i'm drinking <laughs> coffee i shouldn't be drinking coffee this late at night you're gonna mess up your sleep cycle it's already messed up oh well i need a nap for that <laughs> you need a nap for that oh <laughs> oh way to go riffing all okay. right so uh gonna continue on here with uh i think just a little message from our first sponsor this week True. Uh, Carbonite, which uh, offers you unlimited backup for a low, low monthly price. But wait, you don't even have to pay yet. You can try it out if you go to Carbonite.com. Use the promo code TPN. Uh, you can get additional time onto the already free trial that they give you. But wait, there's more. It's easy to set up, and it takes all the technical headaches out of joining meetings online. It's just a simple link. You know, you click it. Easy stuff. Um, For yeah. meetings? What? <laughs> You're talking about sharing files with uh, oh with people gosh. in another location? I'm, see. You're getting lost on what the... What uh, talking about? <laughs> uh, with Carbonite, though, you can back up all your files, <laughs> and you can access them from any device. So I'm talking about iPhone, if you like that sort of thing. Android, BlackBerry, the list goes on. And uh, guess what? You don't have to worry about where your files are stored anymore. It's especially useful if you're in a meeting. That's what I was talking about. Right. <laughs> so it's especially useful, you know, if something happens to your computer or the house burns down, you know, God forbid. What? So something like that catastrophically happens. What happened to all your pictures that you had on your computer, videos, etc.? They're in the cloud. They're safe. Let's say if, if a hurricane hits New York. Hmm. Then it seems highly York, unlikely, but but go on. Yeah, <laughs> and then if you have flood damage, or if you live in like I don't know, say New England or uh, one of those northeastern countries, Vermont, Vermont, and it's for some state. reason your your house gets flood damage. Yeah, and your computer done. Yeah, not if you back it up with with uh, carbonite. That's right. It incrementally keeps the backups up to date as well. That's important. So everything, you know, updating files or whatever, keeps the new version on there. You're good to go. Because I've been using another service. I must say this. I've been trying out another service also. Yeah. Get some healthy comparison, right? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> like, it's taking forever for this thing to, to just back up stuff. Carbonite is simple. It's quick. It's easy. Yeah. To make sure you have a backup of your stuff. It's yeah. important. If you, don't, if you don't back it up, it doesn't matter how good the service is. True. Very true. And uh, yeah, I've only had good experiences with Carbonite. Yeah. So I really like that. The first uh, initial backup, uh, it does take a little while, uh, but they're honestly, uh, for what you're expecting them to take on, 
uh, the the backup speeds are pretty quick. I have been trying so. to back up 45 gigs. Is that? Uh, that's lot? not. Uh, I don't know. That could be kind of big. <laughs> A little bit. But unlimited space. You don't have to worry about that. Promo code TPN for a free trial. Mm-hmm. Extra two months on. And uh, I believe it was two months. Yeah. And uh, it stands for a Tech Podcast Network, in case I'm not saying it clear enough. So uh, let's cover some news items we have coming up here. The first yeah. little section, we're going to just kind of throw all the patent news together because uh, the stuff is going crazy. It's wild. Uh, Apple's crying monopoly over Samsung and Motorola using their patents to defend <laughs> themselves against Apple's lawsuits. Say that again. Yeah. Apple cries monopoly over Samsung and Motorola using their patents, their own patents, to defend themselves against Apple's lawsuit against them. Okay. Isn't that, well, what Apple's isn't saying that how is, you're supposed to do it? Yeah. Well, what Apple's saying is that there's some sort of like a gentleman's agreement and uh, compulsory licensing for some of these things. Uh, so they're saying that that can't be used as a countersuit against Apple. So Apple's saying, fine. <laughs> We're suing you for infringing on our patents, okay? Um, and we realize you have all these patents, um, but the licensing agreement for these patents is supposed to be compulsory. So you should not be able to countersue using those patents. Okay. So I don't know exactly you know, how that's going to shake out, but there's a certain business logic to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, if oh. Apple can get through with that, it's going to definitely cripple if not handicap, Samsung and Motorola. How do you think the Moogle's going to handle this? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Because <laughs> yeah. it looks like Apple could be working up to actually sue Google directly, which mm-hmm. they own. Motorola, you said that you had some interesting news on that too. Yeah, they um, in some of the, the filings that they've had um, in their cases against uh, Motorola yeah. for the phone, their Android phone, um, they are trying to get the judge to put a stay on their suit until this whole Motorola Google thing goes through. Yeah. They can sue the final entity or whatever if they so choose. Mm-hmm. It's interesting, though, because um, the, the suit going on with HTC, there's a patent lawsuit. This is the oldest one over Android. Uh, when Apple sued HTC first. Yeah. And, they're, and part of the filing, they're trying to claim that uh, Andy Rubin got the ideas for Android from working at Apple 20 years ago. So think about what 20 years ago was. That's crazy. Yeah. It's the 90s. What? Yeah. 1991. They're saying you got yeah. it from, you know, 91. Well, the iPod. I don't know. Not 91. He wasn't working on the iPod? It was like uh, what iMacs, maybe. Oh, yeah. Big, colorful iMacs. Maybe it just shows how far in the future Apple actually lives. But they're making claims like that. I don't know if that's some of the internal uh, way that they think about this whole Android thing, Mm -hmm. but that could shed some light on what they might be willing to do and who they might be willing to go after. Yeah. So, uh, But Microsoft, of course, is willing to go after anybody. Uh, They've just forced Acer and ViewSonic to sign patent license agreements with Microsoft over Android. And this, of course, uh, derives from Microsoft's uh, proven patent uh hmm. i guess the the proven patents that they hold over linux linux infringes on several patents android being based on linux then therefore also infringes so there's no word on the price but it's likely in the 10 to 20 dollar range probably closer to 10 wait 10 to 20 dollars per device the, oh per device for every device they view sonic <laughs> or acer and they agreed to that yeah have them over a barrel. HTC is paying. You buy an HTC phone, yeah. boom, you got to pay. Samsung phone, you're paying Microsoft. Microsoft makes more money on Android now than it does on Windows phone. And that's six or seven. They are making more money per day right now on Android than on their own operating system. Well, I mean. That is what the current not, patent, says, patent system has much. brought to us. I don't know. Can't, but I'm just saying, what it means is, if you can't compete, then you can sue and make money that way. So yes. Microsoft can't compete, but they're making enough money suing that it's, you know, uh-huh. overtaking their own thing. So, See, now, now Apple may work well with the record industry, but Microsoft learns from the record industry. Sue, sue, sue. 
I don't know. Yeah. There's a there was an interesting thing though that thing we were talking about earlier with the uh, algorithm to eliminate duplication on yes. services. That was a that's kind of a blow against the record uh, recording industry. Bitcasa. Yes, Bitcasa. I said it. That's the uh, it's the new hot thing. Mm-hmm. So, I I tweeted out a link about it. So we're trying to get the uh, into the beta and to get up to the front of the line. You got to click on. You got to have people click on this link for it. It's a legitimate thing. It's not like some uh, crazy stuff or whatever. But you can sign up for this service that is uh, like an unlimited storage that works across all your devices. And uh, the interesting thing that these guys do though, they eliminate redundant things. So they have like twenty patents on storage. Uh, so if two different people have the same music file from iTunes, then they only store one, hmm. and everybody can access that. So uh, they said that the average user has far less, you know, than what you might think. It's like twenty-five or thirty gigs or something like that of of uh, unique, unique to you, unique data. Yeah, and we're not average users because we record no, a lot of video. But the average user, I believe that. Mm-hmm. So they can get away with a lot of stuff on here, uh, and this whole algorithm thing's nice. So. Uh, check me out twitter.com slash one four and three. I just tweeted it out. So check him out. You can click on the link, help us out. We'll get in that and uh I'll be the reason I want to get into the beta, of course, it's a cool service. Um but they're also supposed to have iOS slash Android apps. That's cool. And I like to be able to review them. So help us out, help us review an app. And help me out. Or if you are <laughs> part of the company, send us an invitation. Yeah, maybe. If somebody sees this, you know, I'm trying to do it the watching. legit way. They they give everybody a, a legit way to do it. Yeah. So well, you don't want to take up somebody else's spot in line, Lane, if they can just hand one out. Yeah, that's true. That would be cool. Or mm-hmm. we could hand them out to people. I do that too. Oh, if you want to contact us and we can. <laughs> there you go. Now we're so, just getting crazy. Off the patent news for a while, though, uh, just a couple other items. Samsung recently unveiled Chat On, which is supposed to compete with BBM, iMessage, and Google Talk. Wait, what is this again? Called chat on. It's one chat word. On. To me, it's it's more evidence that Samsung is really going to be uh, busting open with their own operating system here in the United States. Yeah, yeah. Since Google purchased Motorola, the rumors already sloshing around that HTC could be looking to buy WebOS from Palm. Mm. So, and nothing else. Let somebody else take the uh, PC business. That would be cool. So, that would be kind of interesting. We talked about that before. I think that they uh, HTC is probably the most likely buyer for. Mm-hmm. Web OS. So, uh, Scala, or Scala, if you will, is a possible alternative to Java when programming Android apps now. So, mm. something interesting for developers to watch out for. Cool. Uh, it runs through the same Dalvik VM, so it's not yeah. going to get around any lawsuits. So, yeah. no, David's not going to be the cure for that <laughs> Oracle lawsuit. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, and the last interesting thing I thought I'd bring up this week is uh, Chomp will be powering App Search in the newly redesigned Vcast App Store. Chomp. Uh, Verizon is simply going to call it now Verizon Apps. So their own store, mm. bring it in Chomp. Some interesting stuff. We've reviewed Chomp on here. Yeah, uh, I like it. It's a good way to find apps. So we highly recommend it. You can uh, go to the com and search for Chomp, C-H-O-M-P, and check out that app review if you like. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'd like to plug our other show that we do on Android. Uh, make sure you watch the Android Tech Show for big news on the AT&T merger with T-Mobile this week. A uh, hint... I don't know. Maybe it's not going to happen, or uh, maybe they're going to take enough skin off of AT and T. Who knows? Watch the show, uh, find out more about that, and also watch our review of the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1. So you can find that out, or find out more information about that at theandroidtechshow.com/podcast. That's cool. Um, yeah, that's really neat. Lots of good news this week. Um, but you know what? We've got more than news. <laughs> We've got app reviews to do. We are not just a one-trick pony. It's we true. have a couple tricks. We do. But before we get into the app reviews, I wanted to um, let you know about a little service out there, a fun little thing that we like to call Audible. Yes, Audible.com is the leading provider of online and spoken word um, audio books and content. So, uh, if you've never checked them out before, they're really, really a great, a great, uh, resource there. Um, and if you want to listen to Audible, it has it all. Over 85,000 titles in virtually every genre you can find that you're looking for. 
Um, you can get a free audiobook and a 14-day trial today by signing up at audible.com slash android app. And uh, I actually have a book to recommend, Lane. Ooh, what are you recommending this I'm week? I'm re- recommending something. Since some of our apps we're going to be talking about today are kind of uh, more geared towards the people who um, are a little businessy. Like, one of them's kind of straight up, a, like, great for business people. Oh, yeah, big time. I decided to review um, a book by a local company here, um, Zingerman's. So, uh, Zingerman's is a kind of a deli. Okay, this this is going to be kind of weird. Zingerman's is a deli, uh, a, a coffee shop. A um, They have, like, a restaurant. They have a creamery. How many things do they do? They have a uh, a farmer's market. They have all these things. Like, they do tons of things. Wow. They have a candy shop where they make candies, <laughs> confectioneries. Fine assorted goods. Yeah. So, it's, it's weird. They're a weird company. They're, like, an awesome little company that does, like, $20 million in business a year. <laughs> so, Sounds like Ann Arbor. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> the cool thing about Zingerman's is they have a really interesting way to kind of do customer service or run a business. And the book is Zingerman's Giving Great Service. Zingerman's Guide to Giving Great Service. And this is an audible. Um, it's, um, a, you can get a free book. You can get this for free. Yeah, or if you're uh, using it on something else, is this this goes as cheap as seven forty nine. Yeah, that's it's, good. It's well worth it. Yeah, that's lower than the iOS price mm-hmm. on the uh, whatever store they call it. It is, it. wasn't it like ten bucks? For yeah, it was ten bucks. In iTunes. Yeah. Eesh. I can't believe I paid that. Uh, but Zingerman's Guide to Giving Great Service is like if you are if you own your own company or you ever thought about starting something out and. Um, it's just even getting along with people. They give you some great tips on how to like really. He's all uh, this uh, Ari Weinsberg or Wines Wines something. I don't know how to say it. Do you know how to say that line? Weinsweg. That's it. This is him. Appreciating the great service givers, recognizing and rewarding great service. That's it. Willingness him. to reward and recognize great service when it's given is and essential. Weinsweg. Yeah. He's awesome, dude. He's actually he's an anarchist. Is he? Yeah. Nice. So fits in well in Ann Arbor. It's, yeah, it's exactly. a crazy place if you've ever been there. Mm-hmm. So. so it's all about stuff like that, and he really talks about like getting your employees enthusiastic about the product and everything. Like if you go to his restaurant, like you ask one person about cheese, and they'll talk to you for like ten minutes about what cheese is good. And like what goes with what food and like how to pair it. It's like, it's crazy. Like everybody in there, like they get paid well and they love what they do. So those are the kind of people you want working for you. Yeah. And it's how you make successful companies. And we thought you would like to know about that. Cool. So that's our audio uh, audio book for the week from Audible. Yep. Thanks you for can get the show. free audio book, 14 days for free. Just visit www.audiblepodcast.com slash Android app. Good Fun. stuff. That's an interesting read. I'm going to have to grab that. Yeah. Uh, let's see. On to some reviews. Of course, I said this week yes. is uh, going to be somewhat of a widget spectacular with another little twist that's, uh, as Dave said, awesome for business. Uh, just to remind you of the little things that still make Android better than iOS. <laughs> so here we go. Let's uh, let's try and pull up some HDMI action here. The first app is going to be called Wi-Fi Widget, and I have to I have to activate the uh, the HDMI. And it's free, isn't it? Yes. All I the like apps that. this week are going to be free. Awesome tools for Android. Totally free. As uh, we debated before. Do, do these apps make Android better than iOS? And as I said, you know, yes. the apps make the platform. That's what Apple taught us. It's true. So let's see what we got. Okay, hold your breath, people. There we go. HDMI brought to you by Team HDM Win. For the win. Awesome. All right. 
So the great thing about this Wi-Fi widget is you can create a bunch of different sizes. The two I like are the two by one right here, two mm -hmm. wide by one high, and the two by two. Oh, that's nice. So it shows you, like I'm, uh, I'm disconnected, but I can turn on the Wi-Fi and uh, connect to any network around here, like maybe yours. That might be good. Boom. So and it shows my IP address, shows the MAC address down there in the corner. And the link speed is 54 megabits per second. Now that's not actually speed tested, uh, but that is I'd like to show you what technology it is. So that's the wireless G. And the 4x4 has a little bit of a different layout. See, all the same app, hmm. just different, uh, different setups. Cool. So I'll go ahead and pop this off. Sorry for the little mini freak out. Um, but I'm also going to show you real quick also how well it works on our tablet. Oh. Let's see if we get a major freak out here. Okay. So we should be able to f switch back over. Freaking out. Is it? Come on, tablet. Don't be sad. Oh, <laughs> sad tablet. There shouldn't have to be anything that I have to turn on to get it to work. It should just work. It should just work. Where's my display settings? Yeah. Come on. Sweet. There's nothing in there. All right, so... I guess I'm just showing you the tablet then with my uh, greasy fingers. Greasy fingers, right? So here's a little bit of the uh, the two by two layout of the widget. So and you can also go to the other one like I had, but uh, it just works great for this format as well. That's pretty much all I, I just want to show. Uh, <laughs> well, there's a lot more space on the tablets, yeah. so you can take up a lot more room. You know, you have tons of uh, space up here to put stuff. Uh, so this works really well because. For these tablets, there's no like drop down a menu to quickly switch on and off your Wi-Fi like there would oh, be on yeah. CyanogenMod or uh, TouchWiz or the new LG uh, Revolution phone. Oh. So uh, it just makes it a lot easier to flip that on and off and keep all your information that is right cool. on the desktop. Simple and cool. So again, that's free. It has between 100,000 and 500,000 downloads right now on the market. It's rated for everyone. So uh, everyone can get it. I like that. Wi-Fi widget. Free! So. It's a good price. Yes. You can't be free. Uh, this, this next app is called Call Track, And this one is a little bit more geared toward businesses. Uh, that might sound, sound kind of weird. Uh, but you'll see what I'm talking about here in a minute. It's free. It has between 100,000 and 500,000 downloads right now. And it's, of course, rated for everyone. Um, this app lets you export your call list to any Google Calendar. Huh. So let me see if I can uh, pull this up here. It's called Call Track. There's a little icon. So is the HDMI working? There we go. Oh. What the freak? There we go. It's squishy. It's working. It's working. On. I just have to adjust it here. Keep going. Okay. Well, the things that we have on here, you can turn the app on and off. Uh, you can choose what calendar to log into. The calendars automatically link using Google accounts that you've logged in with. So I created one special called Call Log, um, but you can put it onto anything that you can edit, which would be like my regular calendar or the household calendar. So I'm just hit cancel. You can choose to log incoming calls, outgoing calls. Uh, and missed calls. So, all those together. Uh, the cool thing is, though, when you open up your calendar, let's see, we're going to pull up today. Should have. This is crazy. It's crazy, yo. What? What it was doing. Like, you showed me some of this. So cool. I don't know what the heck is going it's on. It's not yet. working. You broke it. There's okay, something. well, that's what happened. It rolled over. So, oh. uh, I uh -huh. I did sync it twice, so it's showing both the call log and my original one. Um, but it puts it all here in the calendar as it happens. So, if you want to keep track of individual calls that you make, 
it'll put all this stuff on here uh, and tell you exactly what the duration was, who it was that you called. Like this, I called my voicemail, so it shows that it was a call to me. And then I called my grandma, and that was just a minute long. You called your voicemail. Yeah. I clicked on it from a text message. And this was calling pizza. So it took me a minute to call pizza. Pizza, pizza. Duration, 80 seconds. Um, but all this stuff can be edited. Oh, pizza sounds good. Edit event. You can put in whatever notes you wanted about that. Right in here. And, of course, it's a calendar event. So it's searchable inside Google uh, Google Calendar. So if, if somebody were to call that number right now, they'd get pizza? Yeah. You get a little Caesars on the uh, on West Ave. That's a good idea. I kind of want to do that right now. So it puts all that stuff in there. Uh, and again, if you're a professional, it's cool. Uh, if you're just somebody who likes to see, you know, the phone calls that you're making, whatever. Uh, it's not like it can run secretly in the background or something where somebody could log your calls. Uh, <laughs> but you would want to probably keep it off on its own, uh, its own calendar so it doesn't clog up your main calendar. And you can turn it off of your view. So, mm-hmm. uh, so I recommend creating a calendar to begin with. Uh, it's cool. just just for that, so you don't end up contaminating, you know, your regular one. Yeah, that's bad. But I only have that uh, things uh, synced over. It just takes a. It, that's the other thing I should mention. It takes a little bit of time when it first syncs up your call log, oh. um, but then each one after that's very incremental. Very so, cool. There you go. That's free on the market right now. Call track. And you can't do it on iOS. Does not work with the uh, dialer and all that other stuff. I've done it before. Yeah. <clears throat> Was it jailbroken or what? With pen and paper. Oh, nice. Just not automatically syncing anything with pen and paper. No, (laughs) not at all. So uh, this next app is also another automatic syncing app uh, with widgets. Don't have that on iOS either. It's called G-Tasks, and it's one word, and it's for free on the market. What up, G? Can't beat that. No, not at all. It has between 500,000 and 1 million installs, and it's rated every one. Uh, this app lets you sync tasks with your Google uh, Google Tasks account. If you've never used your Google Tasks account, I have not. Uh, just go to gmail.com slash tasks, and huh. it, it will uh, pull, it'll will just pop right up there, and you can mess around with uh, the stuff. But that'll really? work on your iPhone, work on Android, uh, and it just uses Ajax to save the tasks up to the server or whatever. Dang. So, um, but this actually works as an app on your phone, and it's a lot more convenient because it creates widgets uh so that you can oh. do you know different lists and there's different styles too oh. uh depending on what kind of uh uh phone or what kind of home screen you have yeah so um let's see like this widget that i have up top is one that you can scroll up and down in and it's mm. the wider widget uh, and then you have individual list stuff in there and that's uh you click on the name on the top i have the keyboard open and it'll pop you right in uh, to the app so uh, this one on the bottom right, though, is uh, a paginated one. So if you have multiple uh, lists, and that's the thing, like with this with this widget, I set it to display all. Um, but if you have it display a specific one, it'll allow you to switch you know, back and forth using these buttons. Now, you can only do the scrollable widget. It's in the settings when you first create the widget. Uh, you can only do that if you have a uh, home replacement like ADW or Launcher Pro. Mm. So if I go down here to widgets, now I gotta find is G tasks. Boom, two widgets. We'll do the large one. Ask you to choose which list. Mm. I'm gonna put my shopping list up on there. Sort by due date, which it does perfectly. That's cool. Uh, This one I'm gonna do scrolling because I have ADW. Nice. Change the color, show the current date on the title bar, hit save, uh, and this is ADW saying it asks you what size you want the widget. <laughs> it's easy as pie. So it's cool because you can delete and do whatever you want to all tasks inside the app. And uh, now, can you like? Does that that looks like you can go like scroll across? And so can yep. you go to? Oh, cool! So you just swipe it. Yep, just swipe like that. You can switch between them. It tells you how many you have. That's easy. So, I got that. I like that. Hmm. Good stuff. Uh, again, you can add tasks on here by clicking the plus. Hit the menu. Go to a scrollable list here. 
switch to anything or continue to swipe. It's all pretty easy though. The the thing though with me is that it syncs up to the cloud. You know, that makes it so you can use your computer to enter in all this information. And then when you're using your phone, uh you're flipping through maybe on your home screen or whatever, you're like, "Oh, um instead of having to go into an app to look at your task list, uh, list, you can pull it right up on yeah, uh, the the home screen." So, which to me is much more convenient than having all your tasks buried within an app. Because what you look at your home screen all the time. It's almost like sticky notes. Yes, but there it's like sticky notes on steroids because yeah. it's you know smart, listing, swiping, smart and it's syncing all up to mm-hmm. your Google account, which means you don't have to create another account for it. it just works. It's like slicky notes. It's so <laughs> slick. I, I made that. I just a, made that up. Yeah, check the domain. Hurry. Slickynotes.com. So don't go, don't go there. It's probably gross. Good call. Good call on that one. <laughs> uh, so I think that's uh, that's everything we had for this week. I guess I could. Uh, I don't know. I did put the the widget over here. Yeah, you tried it. It's pretty much the same thing. Let's take a look. Let's see if it really is the same thing, Lane. So you got tasks on your oh, tablet, is. and you can you can make those even bigger on there, right? Yeah, they do blow up, but some of them you wouldn't want to. Some of you actually probably want to shrink up a little. But like this one, if I want to pull it over here and edit it, I can make it taller, wider. It's a little bit different. So But the thing is, uh between your tablet then and your smartphone, all the tasks are still synced up because it uses the same service. So, you know, nothing to uh, worry about there with that stuff being out of place because it's all on Google servers. And, uh, again, if you're a business user or you're just somebody that likes a good, simple list management service, uh, this kind of goes everywhere. It's everywhere you want to be. So The domain name is available, especially, I just thought, you could get slick the letter E, or, yeah, the letter E notes, slicky notes. Yeah, get it like slick E notes. Yeah, I like it. That's a free one, people. <laughs> it just comes out of me. I can't stop it. All right. That's why we do the show. Cause just extra things like that. <laughs> I just if I put a if I put a lid on this, I'd explode. <laughs> I need an outlet. All the good ideas. And you are. I have, to make a, that. I have to make a reminder to uh, check that in a year to see if anybody's done anything with it. Slicky notes? Yeah. <laughs> pretty slick. All right. Well, uh, if you want to watch more of these episodes, uh, please check out the theandroidappshow.com. Uh, you can search for specific apps, search through the news notes. Yes, they're all up there on the website. And all importantly, you can click through on the links and see where the heck did you guys just yeah. find out all this stuff? Well, we do a source link. And we have market install links for all the apps that we talked about today. So, true. again, the theandroidappshow.com. Uh, where can they get us on Twitter? Um, they can find us on uh, twitter.com. That's one of the common places. But specifically, Android App Show is kind of what we do there. Nice. Um, we tweet stuff. Yeah, we tweet out uh, links to our videos, uh, which you can find, true. of course, on our website. But also on youtube.com slash theandroidappshow. Tons of videos on there, long ones, short ones, some as big as your head. So, <laughs> you know what we should do? Like when we get new phones and stuff, we should twit pick or like do photos, like showing how good the camera works. Oh yeah, yeah, nice. I just thought of that too. Dang, I, this is good coffee. <laughs> we do have that new thing. We're gonna try it next week. We have something new up our sleeve for the lower thirds and. Mm-hmm. The extra stuff. So, look HD. forward to that. No, we're not going in HD yet. Not yet. Not yet. I shouldn't it's have said anything. <laughs> shouldn't have said anything. So, again, the link for YouTube, youtube.com slash the Android app show. Make sure you include the, the. Or the. the. You can say the also. <laughs> Same thing. Yeah. It's good. So and of course we're proud to be part of the Blue, Blueberry Podcast Network. Uh, you can find more shows like this by people kind of like us, kind of doing 
shows kind of like this. Cool dudes. Other things that might interest you. Mm-hmm. Blueberry with no ease dot com. It's true. And we wanted to give one last shout out to our sponsors here. Uh, Carbonite dot com. They've got some great stuff over there if you are looking to back up your computer. Yes. Or um, audible dot com. Check out that book recommendation. Once again, Audible is, uh, if, you, if you're interested in anything, they probably have something for you. With over 85,000 titles, they have virtually any genre covered. Um, so get a free audiobook and 14-day trial today by signing up at www.audio... Uh, yeah, Audible. <laughs> that's a tricky name. <laughs> www.audiblepodcast.com slash Android app. Nice stuff. All right. Mm-hmm. So I think that's good for this week. That is great for this week. A lot week. of cool apps. Yeah. So and I like widgets in your face, Dave. <sighs> yeah. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> I'm going to... Nothing. I'm not going to do anything. I go on and I'm going to buy an Android phone I'll next. play with this you know, iPod, the iOS 5. and I'm going to hack my iPhone to put Android on. Gingerbread Evo, Evo Cyanogen the Honeycomb tablet. I'm looking again that... I really want to get that Acer Iconia, though. Yeah. That $330 one, that's good. You're all in Android, aren't you? That's almost all Android right there. Yep, just this okay. iOS device. This is all I have for Android. This is Chrome, which, you know, Andy Rubin or whoever said yeah. they're going to merge someday, so maybe someday I'll have Android on my netbook. Or Reese's in my peanut butter, however that goes. Or on your TV. <laughs> I have some good theories about that, too. Yeah. To tell you about it off the air. Okay. Some have more. we ended this yet? Uh, this is kind of the ending, I guess. Oh. <laughs> What's up? Yeah, if you're still watching, this is how the show ends. <laughs> yeah. Wow, it's late. Okay. Good night, everyone. <laughs>